In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to overcome the two bigger limitations to Airtable software. Now, essentially what we're talking about is how to build a custom user interface so that people on your team can interact with your data without having full-blown access to the whole thing. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to see more about how we do that, swing by our website and be sure to check out our free Airtable crash course. I will include a link in the description of this video below. But without further ado, let's talk about today's video topic, which is basically how are we gonna build or how can we build a user interface really easily so that people can interact with our Airtable data without getting access to the full kit and caboodle. So let me tell you about two of the bigger limitations or let's say, uh, you know, these are the things that people come up and when we're on our consultations, they say, hey, you know, this is the, the problem I'm having. How do I overcome that? So these two limitations are as follows. Number one, people don't want users in their database see everything. And when we share access to Airtable as a user interface, so meaning that we give somebody access to our database, then they have access of the whole thing at present. So this is a big limitation because maybe you have certain tables that you don't want them to see, or maybe you only want them to see records in a table that apply to them. So there are you know, strong use cases for reasons that you wouldn't want somebody to see everything in your database. And for that, we have this solution. Now, the second biggest uh, limitation or, or restriction is that people say, I don't want to share access to my database with someone and allow them to copy all the data out. And frankly, there are some ways that we can minimize this, but at the end of the day, if somebody has access to your database, they can grab a screenshot and you know start extracting the data out of there. Again, this is really aligned with that first limitation. So today we're gonna to be talking about an add-on service that you can use in addition to using Airtable. This add-on service is called Stacker. You can find them at stacker.app or stacker.app, and they have built essentially a portal that allows users to log in and only see the stuff that you want them to see. So let's go ahead and jump into my screen and I'm gonna walk through this example with you. Here you see that we've got five different tables and I'm imagining like a high level sales CRM type of thing. And here we have our team members. Now our team members is gonna be kind of the pivotal table here that links to all of our other data and we're going to limit what people see based on that linked relationship. And so I've created two people here. I've, I've got myself in here and then a second person as an example. And we're going to imagine that these are account reps who work for our company and we connect them to different clients and they kind of follow through with leads as they go through the process. So let's talk about clients here. We've got, you know, some really high level client data, phone number, website, company name, etc. The important part here is that we have a linked relationship from the client to the team member. And so we have these grouped right now, you see that they're grouped by that team member. So in our Airtable database, again, if we were to share this with our team, our team would be able to see all four clients, but I only want Gareth to see his clients, one and two, and I only want the second person to see his or her clients, clients three and four. Okay, so that's clients. Now talking about consultations, each consultation connects with a client, right? And we can then use the lookup field to look up who the team member is that's assigned to each client. So in this case, we know Gareth is the team member assigned to client one. He's also the team member assigned to client two, but second person is assigned to client four. Same thing with interactions. This is where we can record, you know, every time we have some sort of interaction with a client. So again, we're linking to the client here and it's inferred or we, or we are able to determine who the team member is based on that lookup relationship. And then lastly, we might also track sales where we record sales, the uh, date of the sale, the amount of the sale, but more importantly, who that client is with. So you'll notice that all of these tables, consultations, interactions, and sales all connect to client, but because a client is always connected to a team member, we can then infer that team member relationship. 
Okay, so that's the structure here in the database. Now let's talk about getting into Stacker. So inside of Stacker, you're going to first be asked a couple of questions. You're going to link it to your API uh, for Airtable. You're going to provide a read-only link so that Stacker can start talking to your Airtable database. And then once you're all set up, you'll have these the ability to turn on or off tables. Now this is the highest level of permissions, right? Maybe you don't want your team to see uh, the various team members. So you can just go ahead and into permissions here and you can turn this off. You can say that, uh, you know, right now it's showing all records, but maybe you only want to limit it to some records or alternatively back in setup here, maybe if I go to settings, I just turn it off entirely. So you can go ahead and, you know, just shut this down or alternatively give them some limited permission here. Now I've got all of these different tables here, clients, consultations, interactions, sales, and team members are the same five data sets or tables that we had in our Airtable database. We bring them in here and then we can get granular about the levels of permissions. So as I mentioned, maybe we only want our team members to be able to see the clients that relate to them. So in our permissions for that table, we can say that our users can access only some records where the record has the team member that matches the user. And now when we go in and we, we're going to impersonate the different users and we're going to be able to see that they can only see the clients that relate to them. Now that's great, but taking that a, le a level deeper, we have the same type of thing with interactions and sales and consultations. We don't want them to see the interactions that other uh, account representatives are recording. We just want them you know, to see their own data, for example. So let's go ahead and, and jump into consultations and look at those permissions. Again, here we're gonna say only some records where the record team member matches the user. So everywhere that we say that, they're only gonna be able to see where there's that looked up relationship to that specific team member. All right, so let's kind of kick out of here for a second and we're gonna go ahead and impersonate different uh, users. I've actually got that set up right here. So we have these two people in our database, right? Gareth and second person. And you'll notice that these are the email addresses that of course are found inside of our Airtable database. So this is actually how these different users are gonna log into our portal. And our portal, as you see here, this is actually what this portal looks like. I have the ability to put my brand logo on here. I can pick colors so that it matches my brand, all of these things. Now, jumping inside, I can impersonate these users. So let's impersonate second person. And this is exactly what second person's gonna see. You'll see that they've got this little navigation bar at the top that is the same as you know the navigation bar that we were setting up in our portal and they can access my clients, my consultations, interaction sales, and then all of the team members. So again, here on the team members, we're saying you can see everything. But when we drill into clients, this person, I'm impersonating second person, can only see client three and four. Now they can add new data here, but they can't edit or change this data. But again, this is another thing that's really cool about Stacker. We could give them the permission level to actually do that. So let's hop back into this again. This is our setup here inside of Stacker. And if I go into client's permissions again, and I scroll down, you'll see that when it comes to records, I can actually update records or allow them to create new records or both. I can also determine if they're going to read every single granular field. So if I don't want them to see the team member and I don't want them to see the monthly revenue of this client, or I don't want them to see the client's website, I can turn all of these things off with a click. And now when I go back to impersonate that user, I just turned off website. So when I refresh this page, we would expect website to then disappear. Let's check and see if it does. And there we go. So whatever data you have that's underlying inside of your Airtable database, if there are secret things that you don't wanna share with the whole team, you see now that Stacker gives you a nice solution to allow people to access only that data that you want them to see. So that's the gist of this. Again, you can really customize and tweak this at a really granular level. So every single uh, different field, you can either turn on or off for read or create. You can allow your users to update records or create records. And you can make sure that they only see those things that they are connected to themselves.
As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.